So for the Checkout Summit website, I think the decision was quite easy because I know the product, I know the developers, and I need exactly these two things for my WooCommerce website, speed and conversions. So Shoptimizer from Commerce Gurus was the obvious choice. So they have a distraction-free checkout and you can, you know, display counters and, you know, out of stock notifications, badges, benefits, and so on. Also, Shoptimizer comes with uh, a plugin called Commerce Kit, and this gives you <laughs> a lot of additional uh, functionalities such as you know, wish lists, FOMO pop-ups, quantity plus minus buttons, multiple galleries and countdown timers, stock level display, and you know, things that could be uh, super helpful for the uh, checkout um, summit website. Now, um, I also have my uh, graphic designer style sheet available. So I know my fonts, I know my colors, my gradients, and I have the, you know, the logo available as well. Now, I want to go through a basic uh, Shoptimizer setup. So, you know, logos, colors, fonts, and making sure that the website is in line with the brand. So, I'm talking about the customizer, indeed. And what I'm talking about is the general tab. So, I go here. I go to select the logo and I go search for, for, for my logo. I'm going to select this and I'm going to crop it like this and we have it. And then the site icon, I have to upload it and go look for my branding folder. And I want to look for something that stands out. So. It's probably going to be, let's see, yeah, going to select it. No need to crop it because it's already square. So I'm going to skip it. And now exactly, I should be having my favicon uh, ready to go. Perfect. Speed settings will be something for the end. Accessibility, they have some reduced motion option. The home page settings, I've already selected the home page as a static page and the news page as the post page. And that's done, the general is done. Now I want to get into the colors. Now, do I have a top bar? I don't have it for now. In regards to the header, of course, I want to match the color of the background of my logo. So I'm going to click in here. And in this input field, I'm going to be selecting, let me open the PDF with the guideline. Yeah, this kind of dark purple, 160B33. So I'm going to paste it in here. And there you go. As you can see, it matches with the logo. There is no difference in color and that's perfect. Do I need a border color? For now, I'll leave it as it is. Mobile navigation icon. If this is kind of dark purple, it should be using, you know, some white in here. Otherwise, this menu won't be visible. The car icon, maybe I could be using once again the white. The mobile navigation background so I guess we're talking about this. Should be white or should be black? I don't really know for now, so I'm not interested in mobile for now, but we're done with the header. Then we have below the header, so you can add a bar in here, the moment we're not interested. The navigation, so the navigation links, color, the drop downs, secondary navigation, car icon, and car text. So. Of course, because we've moved to a darker version of the header, we need to do some work in here. The problem is that I'm looking at the sort of a tablet display in here, not the desktop, which you can access if you hide controls. So as you can see here, I have my logo in here, which by the way, looks quite small. So I might want to increase the logo size. 
how do I do that? I go and inspect it. I will see that at the moment it's 30 pixel high. Let me see if we can find the, yeah, you see height in here. So what do I do? I simulate it and see when is the height that I'm happy with. I like something not too big, not too small. So I think that 50 pixel is a nice uh, measure. So we will remember that later on. Also, as you can see here, the navigation menu is not visible. So we need to do some change in the navigation to make sure that it is visible. So let's go back to the customizer. And for now, let's go to the general site logo. And remember, we want to put 50. Okay, perfect. So that's done. Now let's go back to colors, header. And uh, no, sorry, navigation. And now I want to do some changes on these navigation links. Now, of course, in order to see them, I need to make them white or whatever color I will decide. The hover or selected is this kind of a orange. For now, let's keep it as it is. Drop downs, I won't be having drop downs and I won't be having secondary navigation. The car icon apparently is orange. Let's make it white. The car text white and the car text over color white for now. So I want to see how it looks. So I'm going to hide controls. And as you can see, now the navigation is visible and the header is dark and using my logo and it's all using the same background colors. So that's perfect. As you can see now, we need to do the same exact work in the footer. So in the footer, scroll down, the, the background must be, once again, the 160 b 33 So it's the exact same dark purple that we use for the header. Then of course, we have the footer headings, which are fine. The footer text color is probably a little bit difficult to read. So it should be a little bit wider, same as the footer links. And they will be white on hover. So if I change the text color to white and the footer links to white and uh, on hover, maybe we put our orange just in case. Yeah, as you can see here, we can already simulate that in the customizer. Okay, so we've done the header, the footer, the navigation, and then there is some colors regarding the primary buttons of the WooCommerce thing, but I want to talk about WooCommerce in a other video. So for now, I just want to do the main setup in regard to the header layout. So I've decided, yeah, you can adjust the header height. At the moment is 90. You can decide the layout. So I've done logo, navigation, and cart. You can see it here, logo, navigation, and cart. Or I could have done logo search and secondary menu or logo in the middle with search on the left and secondary on the right and so on. So there is so many different layouts that you can use. The header is contained, it's not full width. Do I want to display the search? I don't need it for now. And you can do some other things like showing the account icon on the on desktop and the sticky navigation, which is enabled. And now the typography. Right, so Shoptimizer comes with three nice handy presets. You don't need to do anything. So they have a classic, which is the you know default font for Shoptimizer. They have some other two options like Inter and WebSafe. So this would be you know great performance wise because it doesn't load external fonts. This is modern and this is you know the default font. But of course, if you developed your own branded entity and you have your logo, you have your fonts and you have your colors, then you might want to go onto each of these and customize the font, font size, header spacing, you know, whether it's bold or regular and so on. So I want to start usually with the heading one. Why? Because the heading ones usually got matching 
the same font of the logo, which based on these guidelines is Archivo in bold mode. So in here I already selected the font family, the font family Archivo. So if I go to the home page of the checkout summit, you should see that the heading one, which is this one, is already using Archivo with 600 in regard to the font weight, the left the font size, not transforming it, and the line height, and it had negative letter spacing, so I removed that. The font color, once again, it should be using not the black, but my 160 B33 color code. This is the heading one, which means that you have to do the same exact work on the heading two, so Archivo, 600, whatever, font color, paste, text transform known, line height 125, letter spacing remove. Then I'm going to do the same with heading three, heading four and heading five. Now we need to match the other titles, which should be the widget titles. So Archivo 600 font size. In this case, I've decided to use uppercase line height and there is no color in here for the blog. So once again, Archivo 600 font size and so on. Then for WooCommerce, Archivo regular. Oh, this is the description. Okay, so that's why it's regular. This is the product titles, so it's 600, perfect. This is the product titles, so it's bold as well. And the buttons. Now, I've searched for a companion, so for a match of the Archivo Google font. And after a few tests, I decided that Nunito, which is another Google font, was a good match. So Nunito is at the moment the one that you see in the buttons, but also in the body of the website. In fact, if we go back to the very beginning, which is the main body, you will find Nunito font color once again, 160B33, just to make it on brand. In the navigation, using Nunito font variant and font size, uppercase, letter spacing, the drop down font, the mega menu font, and we're okay with that. And the paragraphs, once again, using Nunito, regular font color, were 160. And text transform known, line height, letter space. I also selected 18 pixels as the paragraphs, which means that body should be 18 pixels as well. Perfect, okay. So we've done body, navigation, paragraphs, heading one, two, three, four, five. Block quotes are using Nunito, font color 160. This is the one I forgot. And titles, we said already, it's all good, using Archivo, blog, using Archivo and WooCommerce is using Archivo for the titles and Nonito for the buttons. Perfect. So I'm going to publish this so I don't waste all the work that we've done so far. And we've done the typography, right? So then we have the layout. You can work with the container. You can possibly display the breadcrumbs. Let's do it. Now this is the home page. So let me go on to a soup page to see if it shows the breadcrumbs and where. All right, it's probably not showing it because I've chosen some page layout which is different. To, to, okay, it gives you some options also to get the, the breadcrumbs from some of the SEO plugins. Let's see if instead of going to the news page and a single blog post, yeah, that's the breadcrumbs and there's a single post perfect so it's above the image so that's kind of handy to uh, keep also we can do some woocommerce work on a mobile product grid disable the block editor for widgets which is handy to me in the sidebars i've decided that the sidebars won't be showing on my website 
no sidebar on WooCommerce, no sidebar on Pages, no sidebar on the blog archives, and no sidebar on a single post. Then in regards to the blog layout, so if we go to a category, for example, I'm showing a grid of two. I could have chosen you know, a list, a grid of three, and so on. Uh, do I want to show the page title? Yes. Do I want to show the summary? Yes. Why not? For the single post, so let's click on this. Do I want to show the author? Maybe not, because it's always me. So I don't need this box, or maybe I do. We'll see, I'll think about it. Do I want to display the blog meta? So we're talking about the date, the category, and also previous next. This is a, this is a handy box that comes out of Shop Optimizer. Do you want to show this? You know extra section where people can go from one block to the other that's handy if you don't have a sidebar for example and display the feature image of course for the single post did you want to use the layout one or the layout two layout two is full width and better with the block editors for now let's stick with layout one and see if it looks any good in regards to the footer do i want to show the below content bar that's kind of handy if you want a newsletter sign up or something like that do you want to show the footer of course i do do you want to show the copyright of course i do so i need to decide what to place in the below contents maybe a newsletter sign up or you know contact form or whatever it is so layout is done menus are kind of done i created a main menu and assigned it to the primary and the mobile menu and regards to widget as you can see here you can add widgets to the sidebar which i won't be using to the below header if you have a kind of a promotional bar or something like that you know early birds tickets are available below content so that would be above the footer and then in the footer you can of course add some widgets which would be super helpful the copyright as well you can add some text or some other sort of widget like credit card icons and stuff and some extra stuff on mobile which will appear below the mobile navigation area so that's all i'm ready to publish and now if i close the customizer and go look at the front end of my new website perfect my logo my new dark purple bar the white navigation menu items, the white card. This heading are using the Archivo bold. And this is using Nunito, and all the rest seems like perfectly um, on brand. Let me double check by right clicking on a heading and taking a look at the CSS. And this should be using, yes, the Archivo a weak color 160 and the font size that I've defined in the optimizer as settings for the heading at two in this case. I need to add some widgets to the footer but other than that the first setup of Shoptimizer is now done and I will be going on with this video series by tackling WooCommerce next and also by getting in touch with the folks from Commerce Gurus to see how I can improve this website and how I can make the most of all their features, especially in regard to speed and conversion.